Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you all for being here today. Um, you know, in order to support environmental and justice communities, I think it's imperative that rulemaking and permitting processes still allow these communities to have economic opportunities. You've spoken about that. I've supported bills like the Use It Act, which helps to maximize development of carbon capture technology. Those promising technologies are essential to reducing emissions while we're protecting jobs. President Biden has recognized that reducing power sector emissions requires, quote, leveraging the carbon pollution-free energy potential of power plants retrofitted with carbon capture. So, uh, Ms. Flowers, I was surprised when I read the recommendations from the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council, of which you were the, um, uh, either, the, I think the vice chair, I think, uh, and um, that group st stated in their report, quote, that any support for carbon capture utilization and storage would harm disadvantaged communities. So I'm asking you, Ms. Flowers, if you, do you personally agree with that recommendation that the administration should stop supporting uh, carbon capture and utilization technology? Well, first of all, I don't speak on behalf of the WeJet. Uh, I'm here as a private citizen, but I will give you my personal opinion. Okay. My personal opinion is based on my conversations with, with environmental um, activists living in communities in California and other places that that uh, that could potentially deal with carbon capture. They're concerned that carbon capture will harm their communities. And I think that the position of the uh, other folk in the in the WeJack that that made sure that that was there was based on the lived experiences of people who've dealt with carbon capture who believe that it would do harm and part of one of the tenets of environmental justice is to do no harm. So, but in my personal opinion, I would like to see uh, air quality monitoring in Cancer Alley and whatever needs to happen to make sure that those plants are either shut down or they're not polluting those communities as they are today. I don't, I don't have enough information about carbon capture to be able to make an educated opinion about it. But basically, what I am looking for is whatever kinds of technologies that can make sure that we all have access to clean air and clean water. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just, the reason I'm interested in this obviously is where I'm from. I'm from West Virginia, but it, uh, the, the report uh, that came from the uh, White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council, Council is different than what the actual administration and uh, Council of Environmental Quality is saying that uh, CCUS has a critical role to play in decarbonizing the, the global economy. So I think that's a, um, a uh, ju juxtaposition. There are two different positions coming from the same administration. Um, you know, I'd like to know from uh, Ms. Harden and, and Mr. Rex wrote, this is something I've struggled with, uh, again, being a West Virginian, um, because we have so many people that are heavily impacted by regulations or by new policies that come forward or by the inability to fix the problems. But where my frustration comes from, and I think I hear this from both of you, is that do you actually go to the, the people that live there who actually, Mr. Rex wrote, you said it well in your statement, Nobody is going to care for your play, your environment, your property, your part of the world that's so deep in your culture better than you. Yeah. Nobody ha knows how to care for that better than you. And so is that a frustration for you that sometimes all these decisions are made and your voice is never heard? Uh, thank you for the question. The, we truly believe that uh, at heart we are con uh, by nature by, by culture, by how we live off the land, we are the best stewards of the land. Right. We, we walk the land, we, we tent, we fish, we hunt, we trap. All these things bring a spiritual link and a personal link to the land that we care for. That sustains our way of life. And in, in terms of the rest of Alaska, I, I, I truly believe that the 130,000 Native Alaskans share that philosophy of life, and many of them are being directly or indirectly impacted by these contaminants and pollutants. Thank you. Well, you would believe that West Virginians are right there with you, and uh, I think a lot of people in the country, and Mississippians, the same. You, you, Ms. Harden, you mentioned, uh, you know, people say, just leave, you know, just, just go away. You can't, right. you can't, you don't want to. It's, yeah. it's, it's part of who you are. 
and you, you go out into your community, well, most of the time, um, the community comes to us yeah. um, because our, our dairy bar is like the center of right. our town. And, you know, you get, the, you get the farmer coming in and telling you how things are and how hard it's going to be for their life. And then you get the farmer's employees coming in and letting you know how hard it's going to be for their life. And it, it's just, it's, it goes on and on from the top to the bottom. Thanks. I see it all and I hear it all. Right. And my job, my job isn't just to be a business owner. My job is to care for these people and mm -hmm. take care of these people because they are who takes care of me. Thank you. Thank you very much.